This is a 1967 Ford Mustang. The guy's gotta do the right thing and just try to drag it out of here and get this thing running again. Yes. Bring the thunder. It's not bringing anything. That's fine. So we're gonna gently tickle them, starting out with the Tanya Harding 300 here. Wow, sweet Bobby Labonte, come off of here. We are getting one good burnout. Have you ever seen a car on the side of the road just kind of forgot, rusting away and thought to yourself, I wonder what it would take to get this car running and drive it home? Well, I do just that. I travel the country looking for abandoned vehicles and save them by putting them back on the road. And to start, I've got one for you. I just bought a car that's been sitting in a backyard for 28 years, and I'm going to see what it takes to get going again. I'm Derek Beery. This is Roadworthy. This is a 1967 Ford Mustang, and it's been sitting in this exact spot for 28 years. The guy's gonna do the right thing and just try to drag it out of here and get this thing running again. What makes this car really special is it's actually a one owner car. They ordered this from the factory with all of the options they wanted. Oh, it's a Mustang. That's a factory model. Slightly slower than the Mustang, but they made them, super rare. It looks to be really complete though, even with the poverty caps and everything. We got the door locker 300 going on here, I see. That worked great. No, nope, definitely didn't. Let's see what we got here. Uh, it smells like used urinal cakes and burnt broccoli. It's not good, and I ain't kidding ya. Oh yeah, just, you know, just get right in. Uh, Oh, well, it's still as nice as I thought it was starting out. We got some push button radio, probably AM. We have no ignition sticks. Normally a guy likes to start in the trunk. If you've got head gaskets or charging whirlers or something like that, it gives you an indication on what you're in for when you pop the old power barn, but we have, there, there's not, we don't have any is what I'm saying. But we do have some other stuff. What is this? No idea. We got uh, brake light. Now it's spraying, that's fine. Ice scraper, never be used here. Oh, poker cards. That's the front pocket fine. Okay. More light bulbage. We seem to have an electrical issue. Fuses confirm that. Digital tape. Uh-oh. We got uh, 23,000 miles, which you can't really tell, but based on the condition, I'm gonna say that's definitely 123, maybe 223. Not sure. Oh, we'll just pretend we didn't see that. We got definite ankle vintage on the passenger side and about 58,000 walnuts throughout the vehicle. I think we can clean this up. A little bit of spit shine. It'll be just fine. Let's get under the power barn here. See what we got making the ponies. Oh yeah, she'd been wrecked or something. That's not the original hood. We got blue here, blue here. You know, it's had an accident. So we got a, yeah, this will be a 206 cylinder. They make like 48 horsepower, so that's good. You know, but we got a radiator. We got a fuel make it happener. We got a lightning whirler. All sorts of stuff still in here. Let's see what we got. That is bone dry. No surprise there. We test the blood stick for the shift machine. Oh, it's actually fairly red. 
Doesn't smell like burnt hair, so that's good. Get over here to the engine oil, see what we got going on. It says low, but you can't really trust that. Not bad, probably 1030. No gasoline, no antifreeze, so that's great. It hasn't froze up or cracked a block. We can at least assume for now we're ahead. So I'm gonna put a little bit of pressure on this belt. Hope it doesn't snap and just give her an old yank. And see what happens. <laughs> We've got rotational edge, but minimal. But now we know it's probably at least worth the effort of hooking a chain on this thing and dragging it out of here. So I know this car is really rough around the edges, but listen, it's an iconic Mustang, so it's definitely worth my time. I think I'm just gonna start by putting all the easy bolt-ons on the engine. We'll paint it up a little bit. Interior-wise, carpet and seats are gonna do a wonder. Exterior-wise, I'm thinking just polish this paint out, put some elbow grease in it, maybe paint this hood black, bring it around a little bit. This is definitely gonna be a go in the tong rig. Something you can go to ice cream with, bingo, parts run, I don't know, cruiser car. Budget friendly. My wife Jessica's in the old GMC here. We're gonna hook the two together and see if she can pull us out of here. That'll work. Fear the onions. Go. Yep, that's good. Okay, so now we'll reaffix you over here and then we'll snag on it and shoot that direction. Let's go easy. <laughs> Likes to spin the tires, I guess. Keep going, keep going. That's good. <laughs> well, the good news is none of the tires roll. Great. Well, the glass packs sound nice anyway. Well, we got the outfit unstuck. Clearly the tires, well, they're not, you know, doing the rolling thing, but we're gonna pretend we didn't see that for now. I think we should focus our attention on the engine and transmission. Maybe get this thing fired up, hopefully, and then we'll come back around and address that later. Okay. I think we'll start at the fuel, make it happen here. See if we can make some fuel happen. It felt like the gas pedal was moving, but yes. I'm not quite sure yet. Got a one barra in here, of course. No, the linkage is actually busted. Oh yeah, she's locked up tighter than Alcatraz, and I ain't kidding you. So I think what a guy's gonna do is just squirt a little bit of lubricant in here, try to get this freed up. And while this is soaking in, I think I'm gonna pull the sparkulators out. We're probably gonna replace all that anyway, so might as well just dig right in. Oh, that one's bad. Okay. Same with that one. Weird. Ouch. Sure. All right. You can also lay these out, scan them a little bit, and then we can get an idea of how it was running. For example, this one's saying richer than Oprah, you know, so we will just... Put that there for now. See what these others say. She's an oil burner. Guarantee. So there's our question on mileage. She's definitely in the 200,000s. Next thing we need is fuel and some sort of sparkles. We'll work on the lightning system here in a minute, but I gotta get this fuel and make it happen or working if we're gonna try to make this thing run or at least idle a little bit. So we're gonna pull this off here really quick and maybe I can get at it a little bit easier. Try to get this butterfly butterflying. Tell you a thing or two about a thing or three. This thing is stuck. Yeah. 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 So I've just been bending up this fuel make it happener here and well, not making any progress. If I keep going, I'm just gonna break this thing and I won't be able to refurbish it in the future. So I'm gonna set it over here and just ignore it for now. Ran to the shop and picked up this one. Don't judge a car by its cover. This thing is brand new. No, definitely not. But I did rebuild it a few months back and it's probably like 78.3% more good -er -er than that one. So bolt this on and we're in business. Well, for crying in the mud. 
So just finished up the fuel, make it happen here. Got the fuel line in. The linkage is, well, it's linkage in. Got all the vacuum leaks that, you know, we could see plugged up. I think we're, we're pretty dialed in there. Next, we got to move on to the lightning system. Get some spark down there to the sparkulators. That's going to require a lightning cube. So a guy picked up this one. There's a very specific reason I picked this up for this model here. So pay attention. No, it's just because of the handle mainly, but we'll drop this in and next, I'm gonna hook up my Lone Wolf 6000 trigger. And basically this is gonna allow me to turn over the engine from out here. We don't have a key anyway, so basically we're gonna be hot wiring this thing. And then if it rotates, we can check off a whole bunch of boxes here. All right. That's fantastic. Oh. Hey, it's actually working. That's fantastic news. And if you just heard there, all of the cylinders sound pretty even. It's not like a galloping sound. So the compression is pretty even, which is great for us. This is an absolute mess though. I do have a new relay. I may consider taking this apart and cleaning this up. Then we can move over, start working on the lightning system now that we got electricity's flowing through the rig. Yeah, so this is a, some homebrew fire maker. It's not pink lemonade, okay? It's a little bit of two-stroke oil and some bad gas from the 90s out of the lawnmower, but should work here. The oil gives it a little bit of lubrication on the rings and the cylinders so we're not washing them down in case it don't fire, but we'll get some down in here. Yeah, that's, that was way too much. Perfect. Okay, fingers crossed. Bring the thunder. It's not bringing anything. Come on, girl. I gotta take a breath because the starter is just a smoking down there like the bingo hall. But she did fire off a few times. I think this might be a runner and I ain't hearing clanking and banging or nothing else. I just gotta figure out how to like run the trigger plus do the fuels and also do the throttleage. We might have this run in here pretty quick. Well, things are happening. Oh yeah. There we go. It's alive. 28 years, she's a runner. That's fantastic. I actually didn't hear any banging or clanging on the valve train. Clearly the rotating assembly seems to be pretty darn decent. That's fantastic news. So now we can move on to trying to set up kind of a temporary fuel system, get some fresh fuel into this thing, try to get it idling. And then we can move on to stuff like, you know, does the transmission shift? move gears forward, back, all that stuff. And then I'm still ignoring the fact that, you know, all four tires don't roll. That's, that's fine. Yes. Day two on the Mustang here. Pretty incredible. Three of the four tires held air overnight. These bias plies are pretty awesome. Last night we got this thing, well, it fired life for a few seconds there. Made some noise, that's fantastic news. Today we're gonna jump right into the temporary fuel system and just see if we can get this thing idling. Then we gotta start working through the cooling system and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go grab a NASCAR fuel system. We're getting real fancy and we'll plop that in here. This might look like a boat tank. Well, it, it actually is. But it works pretty decent. We'll just kind of rig this up in here and then we can bypass the fuel tank for now. See if we can get it running off of this thing. Sure, that should work for now. So we can get back to trying to get this thing fired up. Hopefully that pump will start sucking fuel out of here and we'll see if we can get it running longer than a couple seconds. Boy, it's really trying. Oh, 
Okay, throttle is stuck. That's fine. She's ready to go. That's pretty incredible. Well, that's all the longer we should run it without some ice cube juice in it to keep this thing cool. But we're making good progress this morning. Pull the key out of it, you know. That's fine. I'm gonna get this thing jacked up. Go ahead and change on the Earl. Don't wanna run it any longer on this old oil. We'll put something fresh in here. Yeah. Well, with these wheels and tires sitting in mud and water for almost three decades, then they're, they're stuck, is what I'm saying. So we're gonna gently tickle them, starting out with the Tanya Harding 300 here. It's gonna be a battle. Luckily, all four are stuck, that's great. All right, now I'm gonna move over to the drinker side front, jack her up, we'll see if anything happened. Nope, definitely not. Yep. Oh, that smells, smells really good. Nope, <laughs> definitely toxic. Keep going, fight through it. Yeah. 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 <sighs> this seems dangerous. Yeah. 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 Do you ever have those days where you just wonder why it is you do what you do? Yeah, me either. Yep. Wow, sweet Bobby Labonte, come off of here. Oh, come on now. Yes. Oh. That was easy. So here's where we're at, real life. Derek's non-fictional storytelling time. Brake hardware, busted, snapped, gone. It's bad, basically. It's not gonna be here till tomorrow, and I think we can get a little bit further here. So what we're gonna do is head over to the Vice Grip Garage junkyard, and I have a 66 sitting over there. We're gonna rob all the brake parts off of that, and might as well grab the tires and wheels, because they're new, and we can plop them on this so we can get this on the road. Let's head over there, see what we can get. Well, love it or hate it, the Ford Mustang is an absolute legend. First shown to the public in 1964, they started selling them in 65, and it became the biggest vehicle release since the 1927 Ford Model A. Think about that. And it made other manufacturers scramble and produce some absolute icons like the Chevrolet Camaro, Pontiac Firebird, AMC Javelin, Dodge Challenger, and the list goes on. And just think, we would not have those cars today if it wasn't for the Ford Mustang. This is a pretty solid rig here, but unfortunately we're gonna have to harvest a few parts for our... All right, we got a whole bag of 66 hardware here. We'll just keep jamming away on this front here. Yes! Yeah! Oh yeah. So we got the front broke free here. All the brake hardware put in, looking pretty good. So try to speed things up with the rear here. You can see I've got it set up to fire the thing up again. I think what I'm gonna do is just jump in, start rowing some gears. Maybe, just maybe, it'll break the rear free. Oh, spinning. Awesome. Yes. So this tire was spinning. So we've only got one more stuck. So that worked pretty good. I wonder. How can a guy get this one to stay still so the axle is forced to put power to the other side? Hmm. So here's what we're gonna try. We're on bias plies that are just bald, but I got some help here. One of the production guys is gonna be bouncing the rear end over here on the drinker side. And if maybe we could plant that tire in tight enough, it's gonna force the rear end to throw 
power over here to the captain's side, and maybe we could start busting this side loose. I don't know, it's worth a shot. It's way better than prying and hammering away. So now I got the key dangling out the front here. We'll fire it up, see if this works. Easy, come on now, there we go. One good burnout. I still think it was successful. I smell rubber. <laughs> okay, that was a success. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Bill. Well, after 28 years, we dug this car out of the trees, swapped the carburetor, went through a bunch of wiring. <laughs> Got all four wheels on seats. That was fun. Nope, complete nightmare. Went through the brakes, placed the master cylinder, whole bunch of other stuff. We've done pretty much all we could do up on the hill here. Time to just jam this thing on the highway and I, I don't know. See what happens. Hopefully we can get back to the shop and continue our work. Okay, oh wait, shoot. I gotta do the hood first. Just like a sewing machine, sure. Get my door latch, also my seat belt. Yeah, that looks pretty good. You know, trial by fire, quick downhill. Gotta make a sharp left and avoid the creek if possible. We're doing the thing. Oh, it quit. Perfect, we made it <laughs> 300 yards. Not too bad, not too bad. Yep. Running on four, that's good enough. Runs fine if you just keep it basically floored. Uh-oh, we got traffic. Oh, please stop. Okay, thank, thank you, appreciate it. Yep, no brakes, sorry. Railroad crossing, we're just gonna jump that basically. I don't know what's gonna happen, but. Well, that wasn't bad. This thing just floats. Should we do a handling test? Oh yeah. Not bad at all. Third gear, she is gutless and I ain't kidding you. But the styling makes up for it. None of the gauges work, that seems normal. Okay, gotta keep her running. Get a little bit of the brake involved. Turning. Grab a gear. Oh, now we gotta turn this way. Might pick up some water, quick. Brad leaks a little bit, you know, that's fine. Well, we are not in the yard anymore, that's great. Only made it a few miles, already overheated, typical. Figured out how to keep it running, you just keep your foot to the floor and power brake it with one and a half brakes. The good news is we have a long ways to go. The bad news is I don't have a radio, but we'll figure it out. Sure, sounds great. Ah, my safety strap. Come on. It's getting worse. For golden. Pizza sure does sound good. And a cold snack. There we go. Got her to the mat. Let's see what it can do. 60, maybe 70. Woo! Throttle actually stuck there for a second. It just, you know, it's a pony, wants to go, but I don't have ignition source in here, so <laughs> that could get a little hairy. So found out the rig has 
Cruise control, not the convenient kind. The throttle just sticks wide open. I mean, it just wants to go, but I ain't got no ignition stick, so the only options I got are hold the brake down that I don't have or throw her in neutral and just let it do the thing. I've got some swervy, downhillish, grade, danger, yellow signs that I've got to go through. So I'm gonna take a look at that. It's also boiling hot again. This radiator is just, you know, it's left the building basically. But I mean, if we keep stopping every two miles, we'll get there eventually. It's a beautiful day. Yeah, that's hot. Woo! What a beautiful drive cruising through the hills here. Engine kept sputtering, quitting. I knew it was a fuel issue. I've been rapping on the old fuel to make it happen. I thought the needle was getting stuck, but then I went back in the memory bank and the Sarah Brill back there, you know. And I remembered that I put a carb kit in this not too long ago, so pulled over, popped the top off, and the, the little dowel that hangs the floaties in there was just, well, it wasn't in there correctly, and the float wasn't floating, basically. So the needle was just stuck closed the whole time. So put that back in its proper place, buttoned her up, got her bolted back on. So I guess we just slammed the hood and keep going, but it sure is a beautiful day. Well, we made it. Here at my shop in Central Tennessee, you might be seeing this place a little bit more in the future. First thing a guy's gonna do is just dig the old pressure washer out and blow three decades of dirt and grime off of this thing. See what we're actually working with here and formulate some sort of plan to make this thing roadworthy. Well, now that we're back at the shop and have access to more tools and supplies, guy whipped up a list here and <laughs> Had to shut it down after a while. It just kept going and going and going. But basically, I could break this down into three sections. We've got mechanical, of course. We got kind of the paint and body work, and then the interior, the big one. Uh, we got to get into the trunk. We don't even know what's what's in there. Uh, fuel pump. Got to address the carburetor. Still transmission service. We've got you know replace the radiator and all those hoses. Wiring. Basically, the whole car. We got to patch the floors. We've got tires and wheels we want to put on this thing. I mean, there's a lot on this list. So we're going to try to get this trunk open here. Don't have a key again. So I'm going to get my lock pick set out and just try to gently get this thing open here. Every time. Oh, factory spare. Otherwise, it's in great shape. Original jackage. Wonder if there's any animals in here. Hello? Hello? Lots of spiders. Well, I guess I'll get a snow shovel or something and just start scooping this out. I've been in hundreds and hundreds of trunks and I've never seen this. It's like a garden. It is just packed solid with dirt. I'm not sure if that creature noise was in here or in the shop. <coughs> Something sulfuric. <coughs> I don't understand what's happening. <sighs> so this is my good friend Dan. I call him Dan the Interior Man. He's helped me out quite a bit in the past. Does fantastic work with upholstery. Dan, how long have you been doing this stuff? Well, I started in a furniture factory in 1973, but I did mostly furniture, and then I just transitioned into the car stuff. Is this the worst one you've seen? Nope. Wow, well, nope. that's pretty impressive, actually. Well, where do we want to start? Uh, we can take the door panels off. We did, uh, already got part of that started on that door. Okay, and uh, then vacuum all the walnuts out? And, and vacuum all the walnuts out, and. Awesome, we got a plan. 
Let's get to it. All right. I wore gloves. He's just in there just digging. Ah. Wow. I take it back. This is the worst one I've ever seen. So it is the worst now? Oh, it's way worse than the worst. <laughs> we found a body. I don't know what kind of critter that is. Hmm. Likes to eat <laughs> Mustangs, apparently. Hermetically sealed to the carpet? Hermetically sealed to the carpet. There you go. You got it. Wow, for crying in the mud. I mean, they just need shined up, really. Decided to go ahead and rebuild the fan. The pulleys. The block. And by rebuild, I mean Craigslist rebuild. We're just, you know, tss, tss, tss. brand new. Ugh. Well, as far as the list goes here, yeah, there's nothing else to, you know, cross off. We didn't, yeah, that didn't happen. But we got three huge things accomplished today that weren't on the list. Cleaning that trunk out, that was a disaster. Getting the interior out, that was even worse. And then I stripped the engine bay down and basically reversed everything that I just did. Preparing for the Craigslist rebuild and getting that firewall and fenders all painted up nice. I'm gonna scoot it back outside, give it its second bath to see if we can get all the oil, grime, and grease off of this thing. Let it dry overnight, and then in the morning, should be ready for some and also some on the inside. Okay. Time to roll this thing back in and st, st. Yeah, there we go. Rebuilt head, new valve springs. Ooh, valve seats too. Brand new water pump. Lost the receipt to that. Pretty much brand new engine. Let me get down here. There we go. Main bearings. Them are brand new now. Gonna pick up some horsepower here, I think. Rattle can restoration. There. New fuel tank with a new fuel sending unit. It's kind of handy to know where your gas gauge is at. You know what I mean? We'll put a new boot on the filler neck here, clean that, and then we've got to plug in the new fuel sending unit. And then I discovered the fuel line that runs to the front actually got squished shut from being bottomed out or something. So I'm gonna cut that out and we'll replace it with a rubber hose up to the new fuel pump we're gonna put in. But at that point, we'll have a new mechanical pump, we're gonna have a new tank, new sending unit, and I think we even found like a really, really cheap refurbed or remans or repopped fuel make it happener. We'll have a brand new fuel system in this, and that's gonna resolve a ton of our issues. And watch this. I'll be dipped, got keys. Okay, so this is the back of the rear seat. Whole process in a nutshell. Put a tie wire in here to hold the springs. Put this layer of vinyl, put a layer of quarter inch foam with a backing on it. On the top here, we added a layer of inch and a half foam to fill this up. And other than that, all you have to do is hog rings. And these are just the welt that's sewed onto the edge. That's it in a nutshell. So with this particular Mustang, if a guy was gonna just do this correctly, this rig would have to go on a rotisserie. This whole floor would have to go trunk, quarter panels, inner fender wells. It needs some work, but that's not what we're doing. We just, we gotta get this thing on the road so we can enjoy it, use it, fix it up over time. So I'm gonna do the right thing and just take the lightning scissors and just 
this out, cut out a patch panel out of that thing, just drop her in and, I don't know, Zeus it in, screw it in, we can glue it in. We can... The point is, we just need to make this not, you know, such an ankle vent and try to keep some moisture out of here. It's something we could throw a carpet over and have a little stability. That's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna have Jessica step in and put in some brushable seam seal right now. It's exactly what they use in the factory around where all the different parts and pieces come together. It'll keep water, moisture, things of that nature out. It still doesn't make this correct, but you know, helps just a scoosh. And then I guess we go on to that nightmare. Should be way easier. Nope, not at all. Perfect. How's it coming, Dan? Just exactly how you'd expect it to be. <laughs> <laughs> so really, really smooth. So really smooth. Mm -hmm. All right. Now I'm gonna go get the mallet. Look at this already. He probably doesn't wanna show us yet, but it's looking pretty good. <laughs> All right, here's your seat back, good luck. It's not luck. It's skill. Oh yeah. Me touch. I mean, that's two for two. You got the mallet? Who's got the mallet? Jessica, help me. Nailed it. Did you count for the bend? Did you add a little? Oh yeah. It's a uh, pi times 2.3% minus six. And then you take the elevation into account. 3.1468327543, repeating. That was almost accurate, but not entirely. It's in the Geneva Convention, look it up. Anyway, cut this out and then we'll put it in there. Perfect. Run her through the English wheel. Holy smokes. I mean, Chip Foos keeps calling. I just keep telling him I'm busy. One day, maybe, maybe I'll go visit him, but I just I ain't got the time. You know? Well, what in the devil? There we go. Custom with a K. Well, we had a really good day today. We got a lot done, actually. Completed the entire fuel system, replaced all of the floorboards, stripped the engine down, painted that, and reassembled it. And Dan is well on his way to completing the interior. Looks absolutely fantastic. Much better than the springs just shooting out on the back. We're gonna throw the hood on it for now, load it up on a trailer, take it down to the local exhaust shop. I got an idea for exhausting this thing, and I think you guys are gonna like it. Try to bring this six in a row, ready to tow. You know, let's bring it around. Let's hear it run a little bit. And that's gonna do it for tonight. Well, we're back from the exhaust shop and a lot has happened since then. So let me catch you up real quick. We're gonna go through this list and hopefully we're through this thing by now. We did time the engine before we left. We found a different door for this rig. After we polished the paint real quick, just kind of scuffed it up what we could. Psst, rattle can and some yellow on her. I scuffed it up, put some scratches in it, laid down a pinstripe. So paint door, polished paint done. We finished up the interior. We got new carpet in there. We threw the seats in that Dan covered. They look absolutely fantastic. Headliner, sure. Just aerosol headlinered that up real quick. Just matte black, looks fine, good enough for now. We put in a back deck lid there, put in a horn button, that spruced it up real quick. Heater hoses, done. Replaced radiator, ended up using one that I had laying around here for a first gen. Spray painted that up really quick. 
brought that back around, rebuilt. And all together here with the matte black hood, all shined up, tires and wheels, I think it actually looks really good. The only thing left to do is jump in this thing, go for a cruise, and maybe even a burnout. I don't know. We'll just have to see. Well, almost three decades sitting in the trees. What do you think so far? When I first saw this, I thought there was no way that I would ever sit in here, let alone go for a drive. And honestly, it looks a lot better in here than a lot of our other vehicles. Sorry, but it's <laughs> Would you rate it a going to town rig then? Well, this is definitely a going to town rig. <laughs> Guy could go to the post office, right to the tavern, or go play some darts or bingo or whatever you want to do Easy. easily in this car. <laughs> I like how this car turned out because it's what I always preach is just get the thing on the road and just enjoy it. There's no reason we couldn't throw the kids in here and go right. get ice cream no, absolutely. or absolutely. go to a car show or whatever. And a lot of people just get embarrassed, like, well, I don't want to take this to a car show because it's not shiny. If you were to tell me this was sitting in a tree row a few days ago... You're going to be excited. I'd be You're blown away. Right. Well, this is my favorite part. We just took a car that was sitting in a tree row for almost three decades, and we drove it down the highway, and we're enjoying it. Yeah, it needs a little bit of work, but again, it's back on the road, and we saved this thing from just rotting into the earth, basically. You know, with all the wheels locked up, of course, we got new brakes in this thing from master cylinder, all the way down to hardware, new exhaust, give it a little bit of a better tone, some throat to the thing. Dan did a really good job on the interior, and Jessica as well. New fuel system, ignition upgrades, and of course that Craigslist rebuild, a little on the engine. It's all new internally, I just lost the receipts. You know, maybe it's at my mom's house, I can't remember. But listen, we're gonna continue working on this a little bit at a time, plugging away at it, but the search continues for other classics and unique cars. See if we can get those running and driving as well. Well, that's gonna do it for this episode. We'll see you next time.